hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Jeremiah. The days of sure coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, O the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will give, forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first 13 verses of Psalm 51 are appointed for this morning. Please read responsibly the half verse. It's found on page 656 in the Book of Common Prayer on your worship leader. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, Father, I Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sins ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and 
Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Make me hear of joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The epistle lesson for this morning is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned disobedience through what he, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn is number 158. Ah, holy Jesus, how hast thou offended?
Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went out to worship at the festival were some of the priests. They came to Philip, Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what? Should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. steps to keep it that way. Popularly, Christian nationalists assert that America is and must remain a Christian nation, not merely as an observation about American history, but as a prescriptive program for what America must continue to be in the future. I think the Disciples of Christ Church said best in their call to oppose Christian nationalism. Whereas Christian nationalism is a cultural framework that fuses a radically exclusionary form of Christian supremacist identity with the political and civic participation of nation citizens through the appropriation of Christian language and imagery to amass political power, and whereas Christian nationalism, while present in varying degrees throughout modern history, has taken on more aggressive and overformed in contemporary United States. Christian nationalism promotes with violent rhetoric and authoritarian approaches to civic life and public policy, an extremist ideology of social hierarchy, including white supremacy, anti-Semitism, and other forms of religious bigotry, xenophobia, persecution, scapegoating, 
of LGBTQIA plus persons, misogynism and ableism. And whereas Christian nationalism appropriates the name of Jesus Christ and the language and imagery of scripture to promote this ideology in direct contradiction to the gospel Jesus preached. A liberative and living, loving gospel to the church. We all probably recognize that Christian nationalism is on the rise. Three years ago, Christian nationalists stormed the U.S. Capitol, killing police officers while carrying crosses and signs reading, Jesus saves. Two years ago, Christian nationalism on the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, allowing states like Texas to outlaw abortion, even in cases of rape and incest. And as we speak, Christian nationalist billionaires are attempting to dismantle public education everywhere, and therefore dismantle this democracy. Let me be very clear, there is nothing Christian about Christian nationalism. It is the worship of political power, social power, economic power in the name of Christ. And I believe it is a betrayal of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus never asked us to kill police officers. Jesus never asked us to ban books or silent te silence teachers or defund schools. Jesus never asked us to control women's bodies. Jesus never asked us to establish a Christian theocracy. All Jesus ever asked us was that we love our neighbors. Who could have imagined that a few years ago that there would be controversy in the United States of America about the importance of democracy. Yet here we are with a former president and presidential candidate who has suggested suspending the Constitution and becoming a dictator like the many autocratic world leaders he expresses admiration for. That has gotten me thinking not only about why democracy is so important, but also whether or not, as Christians, we have the responsibility to promote democracy. The founding fathers of our nation declared independence from the King of England in 1776. In the Declaration of Independence, they cited a long train of abuses and usurpations from the despotic and tyrannical king as the reason for forming this new government, a democracy. Our founders went to great lengths to create a government with numerous guardrails to prevent power from consolidating in a person or elite group of persons. Our government was designed to be for the people and by the people. Autocratic rule by monarchs and dictators has been the norm ever since humankind's earliest hunter-gatherer days. And unfortunately, the norm also has been for leaders typically to be more interested in their own power and self-interest than for the common good. Like with other animal species, the history of human civilization is replete with examples of alpha males ruling over the rest of the populace who were powerless and inconsequential. The late political scientist R.J. Rummel in his book Death by Government investigated democide, which is murder by governments of its own people. Rummel estimated that 169 million people were killed by their own governments during the 20th century. He concluded from his research that autocracies are inherently violent and democracies are not. He concluded that there is an inverse correlation 
between violence and freedom. That is, the more freedom people have, the less violence. The problem is power, he said. The solution is democracy. The course of action is to foster freedom. Psychologist Steven Pinker in his book Enlightenment Now writes, a good government allows people to pursue their lives in safety, protected from the violence of anarchy, and in freedom, protected from the violence of tyranny. For that reason alone, democracy is a major contributor to human flourishing. But it's not the only reason. Democracies also have higher rates of economic growth, fewer wars and genocides, healthier and better educated citizens, and virtually no famines. Thomas Jefferson in the U.S. Declaration of Independence declared that people have certain inalienable rights that were given to them by God, namely life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Jefferson asserted that all men are created equal. In addition, the preamble to the U.S. Constitution states that the purpose of our government is to establish justice, ensure tranquility, promote the general welfare, and secure liberty. What this means to me is that all of us are important and all of us are equal. We all deserve to have freedom to live our lives as we see fit. It means that we have the right to think what we think, feel what we feel, speak what we feel the need to speak, behave in the ways we choose, and be who we are, as long as it does not interfere with the rights of others. These freedoms, I believe, lead us to a more perfect union and a more perfect world. In fact, I believe it sounds very much like what Jesus talked about when he preached about the realm of God, the kingdom of God, about God's heaven being created on earth. New Testament scholar Marcus Forbes said, this was the central theme of Jesus' teachings. It is about a transformed world, a world of justice and plenty and peace, where everyone has enough and where, in the striking phrase from the prophet Micah, no one shall make them afraid. It is democracies, not autocracies, that create such a world. Millions of people have given their lives in pursuit of democracy. Democracies are worth fighting for. Democracies are worth dying for. Democracies promote evolution. And I believe democracies bring us closer to the vision of Jesus. Sir, we would love to see Jesus. In the name of God, creating presence, redeeming Christ, and life-giving and inspiring spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the creed. <clears throat>
Jesus movement, known as the Episcopal Church, we worship regularly at Emmanuel Farnville and Church of the Good Shepherd Faithful, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Rob, our own bishop, for Martin, our Sullivan, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that we all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially those named on our prayer list, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Olivia Douglas, Gracie Griffin, Mike Stazak, Robbie Outlin, and Yvonne Smith, who celebrate birthdays this week, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of gun violence everywhere, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in war, especially in Ukraine, in the Middle East, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those affected in the recent tornado outbreak and other adverse weather conditions, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those Mr. Rogers told, taught us to call the helpers that we have been honoring throughout our Lenten services, in whose honor the flowers greenery has given the day, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the community of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Thomas, John, Barnabas, and Patrick, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. You, Lord, our God. Yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
word there is madness. Yes. Are there any announcements for the good of the church? Uh, please note that this is a busy week. Uh, tomorrow's Dane Julian, Tuesday Vestry, and Wednesday we'll have the last of our evening prayer and soup supper for Lent. Uh, this week we are honoring crisis counselors. Then move ahead to next week. Next Sunday, Martin will be with us again as our celebrant for Palm Sunday. On Thursday at 5.30, those who are so inclined may join us in the nave for a few prayers and then the very solemn ceremony of stripping of the altar in preparation for our Good Friday service, which will be at 3 o'clock with uh, the Reverend Daniel Sensi, Rector of Christ Church, Olympus City, as our celebrant. On Holy Saturday, 10.30, we are going to do the Holy Saturday service. This is not to be confused with the Easter Vigil. And following that service, and again, all who can come, please do so. The Flower Guild and Altar Guild will prepare the church for um, Easter Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let us now present our guest. Oh, now the be well, I spoke to be well on the way to church. She said it's okay to share with all that she's, um, she had a poor minute or two on uh, Thursday, I believe, and the, the doctor uh, kept her up there, admitted her to the hospital. Vince had packed uh, just in case, hoping that he would keep her, and then during the March of death, trying to figure out how she would move in there. Process of elimination is what um, she ended up saying this morning. We'll keep her in prayers. Let us thank our gifts and thanks to offerings to the Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us to pray for an offering.
Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, may the you perfect in every good work and do God's will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, and the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 441, from the cross of Christ thy glory. Thank you. 